Hello my sweet honey bunnies and welcome to my Mandarin Ducky. Today we are going to learn how to make a realistic baby owl figurine from polymer clay. For this project we will need a knife tool, box carving tool, a ball tool, rubber shaper which is optional and tweezers. And we will also need one block of polymer clay in color black. I already pre-made the eyes and if you want to learn how to make your own glass eyes please click on the link below. I made a video about it before. These particular eyes are made in golden shade and they are approximately 6 mm in diameter. To make the whole construction sturdy we will also need a wire. And for finishing touches we will need a bigger hard brush, a medium and small soft brush and we will use black, white, brown and warm yellow acrylic paints to decorate the owl. Let us start. Unpack your clay block and slice it halves with blade or a knife tool. Then slice off about a quarter of the remaining piece and put it aside. This will be for the wings and the details. Condition your clay and turn it into the ball. After that, start shaping the ball into the egg shape, but a little bit more stumpy. Now you can see that the bottom side is flat and this is what we want. The next step is to make the eyes, but before we do that we need to approximately mark the eye indentations with our fingers. After that, use a large ball tool to create eye sockets and insert the glass eyes you have into the sockets. Next we will need to outline the head. Take your carving tool or a needle tool and start drawing a mask type shape around owl's eyes carefully. Then take a smaller ball tool and smooth the line. Take any of your tools and use it to press gently but firmly in the middle part of owl's head. This will help to shape the head of our creature into more realistic appearance. Now let's make a little sharp owl's beak and attach it where it belongs. Help yourself with a needle tool or a rubber shaper to attach it correctly. Now, I know I didn't name this scary tool in the beginning, so please forgive me for that. This tool can be replaced with a needle tool or a knife tool and it is designed to create hairy textures about 10 times faster than you would do it with a regular needle tool. I started with the face and nose area and so I will first use my knife tool to create fine furry texture. From time to time on bigger and larger areas it is nice to use this needle brush tool to save up some time for yourself. You can brush to different directions to create different flow of owl's feathers. Now it is time to work on wings. Create a shape of a drop and then flatten it. Then curve the thin end to make it look like paisley ornament shape. Next take your ball tool and start carving feather texture. First draw tiny feathers and gradually increase the size when heading towards the thinner end of the wing. Make two wings and attach them on both sides of the owl body, join together on the back. Our next step is to create a wire armature for one curvy and two straight wire bits. To join them I made little hoops on the end of both short wire pieces with my rounded pliers. We will take the other half of our clay block and we will break it into two halves and roll it in a sausage shape. Next we will need to squeeze the armature inside the clay. The process may seem to be quite messy, but just make sure you hide the armature inside and keep it all together by evening the whole construction out from time to time. You also need to make sure the two ends of the curvy wire are looking down. The curvy wire is the base branch which the owl will be sitting on, and the other two little straight wires are armatures for owl's body. When you finished fixing the construction inside the clay, place it in correct position to allow the two ends to flatten and become a sturdier base for this sculpture. After that, you will need to make the branch look more realistic by applying some wood bark textures. Use the knife tool to create deeper cracks in the wood. Now it is time for the first bake. Place the branch on the baking tray and put it 
into the oven for 15 minutes in 130 Celsius or 266 Fahrenheit degrees. While the branch is baking, we can create another little branch to add up some cuteness to this project. We will make a little stem with an armature inside and two little leaves. And you can apply some wood texture to it so it does match the main branch. We also need to make an owl's tail. Use a small piece of flat clay and cut a triangle. Then shape it into a shape that looks more like a feather tail or a fan. The base is now baked and we can mount the owl on it. Now we can work on details and hold on to the branch without being constantly worried about fingerprints and deformations. To make the small branch stick to the big one, use the little ball of clay and place it into it. Blend it all together. The other way of doing it would be to add an extra piece of wire before baking the main branch and then it would be even sturdier. And now it's a perfect time to apply the tail. Tidy up the owl figurine from all the fingerprints by covering them up with the fresh texture. And when that's done, the last remaining thing to make is the little legs. The sculpting is done, we finally got to the last part, painting. Take the hard flat brush and dip it into brown paint. Brush it on the paper until paint is almost gone and start gently brushing the figurine all over. Premix the colors to get the light brown shade. Apply it on the top of owl's head, wings and the front. Try to only slightly touch these areas instead of fully filling them in. This will give the figurine a dusty, worn out look. Use a subtle shade of yellow for owl's chest and the wings. Get even lighter shade of brown and fill in the central parts of the face. Don't worry about the eyes. If the paint gets on the glass, it can be easily wiped off with wet paper tissue. And next, apply some white paint on the neckline and little white dots on the owl's head. Perhaps create some specific little signs on the wings or whatever you like. From this point you can feel free to personalize your owl as you like. We also need to finish up the branch that the owl is sitting on. I know we are now finished, but after I filmed this project, I decided to create a third branch to make the construction better balanced to stop the owl from falling over. As with all projects, some things might need to be changed or improved. It is all about trial and error until you reach your perfect design. So for now this is it and I will see you guys in the next videos very soon. Thank you for watching and please support by subscribing. Bye!